Hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing fine. Let us continue our lesson, chapter 4, Colonialism and Tribal Societies. We shall discuss the tribal revolts, the causes, the Santal Revolt of 1855, the Munda Rebellion of 1895-1900, to and the tribal uprisings in the Northeast India, in Assam, Meghalaya, and Manipur. First, let's see the tribal revolts in Central India, the causes. Tribal uprisings in Central India were prompted by the British policy of encroachment on their lands. This was directed against the Dikus or the outsiders, who had deprived the tribals of their customary rights and forced a new way of life on them. Zamindars, moneylenders, and British officials all fell in this category. Now let us see, let us take a look at a few tribal uprisings. First, the Santal Rebellion of 1855. The Santals inhabited Santal Pargana in present-day Zarkhan. They considered their lands to be blessed by their ancestors. This content had been simmering among the Santals after the introduction of the permanent settlement. They were reduced, they were reduced to the status of tenants and were expected to pay rent to the Zamindars. Many of the local chiefs had been evicted from the lands and replaced by non-tribal Zamindars. The introduction of Roads and railways in this period was intended to help the extension of colonial rule. In 1853, construction began on a railway line in the Santal Pargana. This also caused resentment among the tribals once they realized the effect it was having on their traditional lifestyle. The Santal Hul or Hul is a term signifying a movement for liberation, swept across the tribal regions from present-day Bihar to Odisha. It was led by four brothers, Chidu, Kanhu, Chan, and Bhairav. The biggest cause of this uprising was the large-scale alienation of the tribals from the land which was so precious to them. On 30 June 1855, a large group of Santals declared independence and took an oath to fight against the British and their agents, Zamindars and moneylenders. Sidhu and Kanhu were proclaimed the leaders of the rebellion. These momentous event took place at Botnadi village. On 7 July 1855, the British sent police officials to arrest Sidhu and Kanhu. There was a violent confrontation between the tribals and the British, where the tribals killed the police officials. This turned the confrontation into a full-blown war. During the course of the revolt, the tribals captured a large amount of land Extending, extending from the Ras Mahal hills in Jharkhand to Bagalpur district in Bihar and to Birbhum district in West Bengal. Some British officials, landlords and moneylenders were killed during the movement. The British government declared martial law over the area and armed forces were sent to suppress the uprising. Thousands of Santhals were massacred. Sidhu and Kanhu were captured. However, the movement did not go in vain. The government was forced to examine the reasons for the revolt. It elected the Santal Parganas Tenancy Act to protect the tribals. The regular police force in the tribal area was dismantled and the task of maintaining law and order was given to the village handmen. Moving on to the Munda Rebellion of 1895-1900. to The Mundas were the tribe based in the Zarkhan region. Zarkhan was then part of Bihar. They had an ancient system called Khun Kari, where they enjoyed customary rights. There was no landlord class. Under the British, this system was replaced by the oppressive Zamindari system. The Mundas were angered by the growing instances of their land being grabbed by non-tribals. The Mundas now became tenants of the landlords and were forced to pay rent. In addition, they were subjected to other forms of exploitation. They were evicted from their ancestral lands at the Zamindar's will. If they were unable to repay loans, they were forced to become bonded laborers. This was called bed beggary or forced labor. Natural calamities added to the woes of the Mundas. They blamed the Dikus or the outsiders for their miseries. The Munda rebellion was led by a dynamic figure named Birsa Munda. 
The rebellion aimed to end British rule in the area and begin Munda rule. It was called Ulugan or the Great Tumult. The Mundas considered Birsa Munda to be God's representative and he was believed to have divine powers. He protested the encroachment of Munda land by non-tribals. He was wary of the British. The Munda uprising took place in the Chota Nagpur region of Jharkhand. Birsa Munda declared the Mundas to be free from British rule and asked the people not to obey anyone but him. He also told the Mundas not to pay rent to the British. The movement became violent and, offic and officials, landlords and missionaries were attacked with bows and arrows. Many tribals were ar arrested. Birsa Munda himself was captured. Harsh measures were taken to suppress the uprising. Birsa Munda became a lesson for future generations. He represented the aspiration of the tribals and became an inspiration for other rebellions. Some people even began to worshipping him as a divine entity. Following the rebellion, the government enacted the Chotanagpur Tinensi Act of 1908. It assured the Mundas their customary rights and abolished bed beggary or forced labor. The government also attempted to gain a better understanding of the tribal's way of life. Officers were stationed close to the Munda villages so that they could address the grievances of the tribals quickly. Tribal uprisings in the northeast. Assam. The British imposed an abnormally high land tax in Assam. In Kamrup and Darang, land revenue was increased from 50% to 70%. The high land revenue demand sparked off a series of revolts in 1893-94. When peasants failed to pay up, the British seized their lands. Though they protested, the British suppressed their protests ruthlessly. Meghalaya We learned that the British were granted the Diwani of Bengal, Bihar and Orissa after the Battle of Baksar in 1764. After this, they wanted to build a link road between the Brahmaputra and the Surma Valley. This new road was supposed to pass through the Khasi Hills. Therefore, building this road would lead to the displacement of many locals belonging to the Khasi tribe. In 1860, a house tax was imposed by the British, causing further resentment. Towards the end of 1860, an income tax was levied in addition to the house tax. This move sparked off a wave of revolts among the tribals. The leaders of the movement was U Kyang Nangba. In the unrest that followed, the British then sent several regiments to put down the tribals. Nangba was captured and hanged publicly to strike terror in the hearts of people. In 1872, the British sent armed forces to establish their rule in the neighboring Garo Hills. The tribal residents of the Garo Hills rose in rebellion under Pa Togan Sangma. This too was ruthlessly put down. Manipur When the king of Manipur died, there was a war of succession between two factions. The main contenders were the king's eldest son, Sur Chandra, and his stepbrother, Tikendrajit. Sur Chandra sought the aid of the British. They declared war against Manipur in 1891. The Manipuris under Tikan Razid fought bravely. However, they were defeated and Tikan Razid was hanged by the British. A commemorative moment, monument named the Beer Tikan Razid Memorial stands at the spot where he was hanged. The British period saw many revolts by the tribals who were struggling against displacement from their traditional lands and lifestyles. Several movements also aimed to bring about social reform. The Kherwar movement under Bagirat Manji is one such example. After independence, the government initiated many steps to improve the lot of the tribals. It took steps to conserve the unique tribal culture and way of life. With this, we conclude our lesson for today. Thank you.